and this nasty if I be but hey you so you did little back again in the draw and it grew mad Hey guys, I'm working hard on the next couple of videos for you. It'll be about the science and kind of promising experiments on extrasensory perception and also some theories on the matrix that I've only heard once and I thought it was the best matrix theory ever and I want to cover that. This one is about a man named John Teeter and how he traveled through time to surf early internet bulletin boards <laughs> or something like that. The world kind of looks to me right now like one of those goofy time travel movies when everything gets all screwed up because a time traveler tries to fix something in the past and ends up stepping on a mosquito or something. But well, that was just one little insignificant mosquito. Would you kindly pass me a donut? Donut? What's a donut? What if? What if like a bumbling time traveler was trying to stop something, let's say, I don't know, murder hornets? They go back, they try to change something, and now, boom, Australian fires. Remember those? Boom, reality show star becomes president. Who predicted that? Boom, global pandemic? I know it's kind of a goof, but think about it. You don't hear any stories about those murder hornets anymore. Maybe? But all the same, the joke made me think of an old internet mystery of a man named John Teeter. But to understand John Teeter, you gotta understand the early internet and the turn of the millennia. You see, it was basically the Wild West and the beginning of internet hoaxes, and a lot of people believed them. And arguably, the gullibility of people hasn't changed all that much. But back then, hoaxes and trolls weren't really a big thing. You see, the early internet was a blessing and a curse, where slow download speeds and internet hoaxes reigned supreme. Remember the Blair Witch website? Yes, that marketing stunt something we would maybe call an alternate reality game today. It fooled a lot of people into believing that found footage was real and then created a whole new genre for it. And by the way, I totally didn't get fooled. Other people are stupid, not me. Okay, I, I got, yeah, I believed it. Kinda, I kinda believed it, okay, okay. You see, internet trolling was kind of an unknown at the time. And in fact, I may have even participated in a little bit of trickery and made someone believe that I was Eddie Vedder from Pearl Jam on ICQ. Uh -oh. <laughs> it just it just makes me happy that someone somewhere thinks that Pearl Jam got its name because you can make jam out of oysters. <laughs> that just makes me laugh. But one of those internet trickeries came from a man named John Teeter, a supposed military time traveler from the year 2036. He showed up on bulletin boards, which is another ancient internet term lost in time. Just, it's a forum. Around the year 2000 and 2001. And he fascinated the world with stories of an apocalyptic crash destruction around 2004 or 2006. Now, despite the fact that he was likely debunked, well, I mean, last I checked, we're past 2004. And likely some entertainment lawyer. What fascinated me most was his very, what felt like plausible explanation of how time travel could actually work. Maybe borrowing from Back to the Future, Mr. Teeter explained that he had a vehicle with a stationary mass temporal displacement unit powered by two top spin dual positive singularities. Or as I kind of remember it is a small black hole generator that could create a tiny warp of space time itself. Now let's be honest, doesn't that sound a lot cooler than something called time crystals, which is a real thing? Uh, I should do a video on that. But what made it even more interesting was how he explained how time travel itself worked. You see, instead of the typical back to the future butterfly effect premise of disrupting the timeline and of course the- would unravel the very fabric of the space-time continuum and destroy the entire universe! <sighs> it was the first time I ever heard of the multi-dimensional theory of creating new timelines. In fact, one of the things John Teeter made me go Whoa. about was reading his post explaining that because he would undoubtedly affect his present by visiting his past, that once he was done in the past, he would then have to travel back in time again to the point he first arrived and then travel back to his present. And even then, it would still create a new timeline, but at least this one would be accurate to something like 99.2%. So he would see minor changes like a certain football team would win or maybe the Berenstain Bears would turn into something different like, I don't know, the, like the Berenstain Bears. Something crazy like that. 
And speaking of crazy alternate realities, I would be remiss if I didn't plug the Index Project. It's my crazy little cerebral experiment in indie entertainment where you are the co-creator and help develop this sci-fi story world. It's a pretty crazy experiment and it's going to mix fiction with reality and you're going to be involved. So if you got a minute, check out the channel and the website in the description below. Thanks guys. I really hope you like this Ponder Out Loud and until next time, stay pondering.